Welcome back everyone, appreciate you all being here today. Uh, my initial plan today was to do the geography now on Switzerland. Um, I wanted just to get started on it, just have another country under our belt and just keep going with them. But as I was loading up the video and just, you know, kind of messing around a little bit here before I got started, oh, excuse me, I got something in my eye, um, I came across this one, Top 25 Natural Wonders of the World by Ryan Shirley. He always does a fantastic job and I was like, you know what, we're going to do that because for one, I was always under the impression that there's only one, uh, seven natural wonders of the world so if he says there's top 25 there's top 25 <laughs> so i just wanted to get just you know do this video and and get an idea of and just see some more beautiful spots before we hop into another country so without further ado um it's a 15 minute video let's hop into it top 25 natural wonders of our world What's up guys, my name is Ryan and I spent the last few years traveling the wonders of the world and I want to share with you my favorites. So here's my natural wonders top 25. The earth is just such an amazing Our place. Our incredible world is full of so many wonders from the islands of French Polynesia to the otherworldly landscapes of the Sahara Desert. There's so many incredible natural wonders on earth. Let's start this video off at the Himalayas. Stretching through the countries in Nepal, India, Bhutan, China, and Pakistan, the Himalayas are home to the tallest peaks in the world. I mean, they literally make all other mountains look small. The country probably most well known for the Himalayas Nepal. is Nepal. Yep. It's home to eight of the world's 14 mountains that are over 8,000 meters, including Mount Everest, which is the world's tallest, with a height of 8,848 meters. If you want to experience Mount Everest, I recommend doing the hike to base camp. It takes anywhere from 10 days to two weeks to do the round trip trek, and on the way, you'll experience them in Nepal. 10 days to two weeks? Holy cow! Nepal's most amazing mountains. Another incredible place in the Himalayas is Nanga Parvat. It's located in Pakistan, and it's the ninth tallest mountain in the world with a height of 8,125 meters. You can get a great view of it from this wow. place called the Fairy Meadows. I mean, there's just that an endless just... amount of incredible mountains in the Himalayas. After, we're going to head down to India to visit the Western Ghats. Located on the southwestern coast of the Indian Peninsula, the Western Ghats are a massive mountain range that stretch 1,600 kilometers and are older wow. than the Himalayas. It's known for being one of the most biodiverse places in the world and is home to thousands of wildlife species. I mean, I just love how incredibly lush the mountains are I and mean, it's a shade of green I've never seen before. Now, one of my favorite places in the Western Ghats is the Defcon Waterfall. It's located in the northern region of the mountain range and it's this incredible. I'm going to say it a hundred times during this video, our world is incredible. It is so beautiful. Rubble waterfall, and during monsoon season, there's multiple streams cascading into the valley below. After it, we're going to head over to Algeria to visit the Tassili Niger National Park. Now, located in southeastern Algeria in the Sahara Desert, Tassili Niger is home to some truly otherworldly landscapes. Massive rock monoliths wow, dominate the horizon, that. contrasted with reddish orange look sand. And my favorite feature of the area is the massive sand dunes. They have such a unique color, contrasted with dark rocks. If you want a true Sahara Desert experience, the Sili Niger is an ideal wow. place to go. After, we're going to head to Ethiopia to visit Dalo. Located in the northeastern part of Ethiopia, Dalo is considered one of the hottest places on Earth with an average temperature of 35 degrees Celsius. It's a truly barren Ugh. wasteland with virtually I don't, no I like warm temps. One like of my favorite features of Dalo really is its colorful hydrothermal pools. They are striking yellow, orange, and green colors. Nearby Dalo is the Urta Al volcano. Known locally as the gateway to hell, Urta Al is home oh, to okay, the longest okay. existing lava lake that has been there for over 100 years. I mean, the landscapes of Ethiopia are truly on another level. After it, we're going to head to Uganda to visit the Revenzori Mountains. When okay. you think of Uganda, probably green hills and gorillas come to mind, but yep. it's also home to one of the most incredible mountain ranges in Africa. Located right in the border between Uganda and the Congo is the snow-capped Revenzori Mountains. It's home to the third highest peak in Africa called Mount Stanley that has an elevation of 5,109 meters. Now, special thanks to my buddy David Clancy for helping with footage. He spent several days hiking through the mountain range and summited Mount Stanley. He made an incredible film that I'll link below. Now the area is also known as the Mountains of the Moon and it's the source of the Nile River. The vegetation here is just so bizarre. It starts off as a rainforest and as you scale higher, the vegetation changes drastically until you reach the snow-capped peak of Mount Stanley. I mean, who would've- This is my ignorance coming out and I do not care to say it. I just don't think of this when I think of Africa. I mean, I'm sure most people don't, you know what I mean? Um, when I think of Africa, I think of like beautiful scenery. Don't get me wrong, like Nambia and stuff like that. Hopefully, that's in Africa. <laughs> um, but you know, I it's just our education here. You instantly think of like the pyramids and stuff like that, and you think of South Africa. Yeah, I got something in my eye. Um, 
I just don't think of mountain ranges and stuff like this. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm, I'm so God, happy. God, He's, so much snow. I, I looked at this video. Head to Tanzania to it gives me a brand new view of the, the continent of Africa. It's located near Lake Natron, and it's an active volcano of a height just under 3,000 meters, and it's known by the local tribes as the Mountain of God. And after scaling it, I totally understand why it has that name. So we decided we wanted to climb the volcano, so we started at midnight, and I honestly didn't know what I was getting myself into, but it ended up being the hardest hike of my life. But right around 6 a.m., we made it to the top, and the sun started to climb over the horizon, and I just couldn't believe my eyes. I was standing on the volcano's rim, and the crater was absolutely huge. It had this black bubbling lava inside, and it's said to be some of the coldest lava in the world. The volcano was just so loud, you could hear the earth coldest rumbling, lava? and it sounded like That's a thunderstorm. Different. As I walked to the other side, I got one of my all-time favorite shots as I was standing on the volcano's rim overlooking the scenery below. It reminded me of the wow. quote in Lion King, where Mufasa says to Simba, everything the light touches is our kingdom. It was one of the most powerful views I've ever seen in my life. It was hands down one of my all-time favorite travel experiences. While we're still Majestic. in Tanzania, we're gonna go on a safari in the Serengeti National Park. It's one of the best places on earth to see Africa's wildlife. See, this the is what I'm talking about. Chilling. I guess I should have clarified a little bit more. I was thinking more like this, you know, where you do get green and everything, but you just see a lot of wild animals and the safari and the beautiful nature that way. I didn't expect mountain ranges and stuff like that. Trees, the cheetahs, the Serengeti, the, the Serengeti, the Serengeti is go. the Lion King in real life. When we were there, we were on game drives every day. We were able to witness so many incredible moments, whether it was watching two lionesses enjoying the sunset or witnessing the endless herds of wildebeest. The most memorable moment was when we escaped a massive thunderstorm and we were able to watch these zebras grazing accompanied by massive thunderbolts and the craziest sunset I've ever seen in my life. After it, we're going to Angola to visit the Black Rocks of Pungo Andolo. Located in northern Angola, this is one of the most missing locations in Africa. A special thanks to my buddy Ellis Van Jason for sharing wow. his footage. He spent some days exploring these rocks and the rest of Angola, and I'll link his video in the description below. During sunrise and sunset, this place Look turns into a magical location. Look at that. And if that you're is lucky, we'll get some fog to magic. Now, is the magic. Also, word. nearby is the Kalandula Falls, with a height of 105 <clears throat> meters and a width of 400 meters. It's one of the largest waterfalls in Africa. I mean, Angola has so many beautiful places very few know about. After it, we're going to venture to Botswana to experience the Okavango Delta. Now located in the northern part of the country, the Okavango Delta is this massive seasonal swamp that can be seen from space. The area gets flooded and it reaches its peak water levels during the summer months. Now due to the influx of water, animals come from all over and it creates one of Africa's greatest wildlife concentrations. That's awesome. From elephants wandering That's through insane. the chest deep water to red lichway antelope running through the swamps. It's just incredible how much wildlife exists in the Okavango Delta. One of the best ways to experience it is by taking a boat and wandering through the endless canals and lagoons, marveling at all the wildlife. You know what's always blown me away with this kind of, with, with Africa, is you'll see videos like that right there. Is, you know, all the, you know, like the lion. The lion is obviously a predator. It's a carnivore. And it's just sitting there, just chilling with all the other animals. The animals aren't, they're keeping their eye on him, or her, I guess I was a lioness. Um, but you know, they're not like running away from him. They're just telling you, like, hey, man, I'm just going to get a drink of water. I'll come attack you later. <laughs> I just think that's amazing how, you know, when humans are threatened or have our threats around us, we're all like, you know, we're keeping an eye on them. We're all at ease or uh, uneasy. This one, they're just like, yo, what's up, man? Yeah, have some water. We'll run away from me later. <laughs> After we're going to head to the Bounai Coast. <clears throat> Located on Italy's island of Sardinia, my favorite place there is Cala Glorice. I think wow. it's easily one of the most beautiful beaches in all of Italy and the world. It has these massive pointy rock formations coupled with green cliffs and Gatorade blue water. It was about a 45 minute boat ride to get there. We anchored the boat and immediately went for a swim. The visibility was incredible. Some of the Look best I've the, ever swam in. Water, Another man, reason I wanted to go is because there's a sea arch and you can do some cliff jumping. I sent a few jumps off and it was just so much fun. There's no better feeling than sending a gainer into the sea. After, we're going to head to Russia to visit Lake Baikal. Baikal. Located in southern Siberia, Lake Baikal is one of the largest freshwater lakes in the world. It contains more than 20% of all the world's fresh water. Look it's also the world's that. deepest lake with a depth of 1,642 meters. It's also home to one of the only freshwater sills. Now, during the winter months, the ice can freeze to be 2 meters thick. One of the easiest ways to get across the lake is with a hover boat, or you can also have a winter workout and ice skate on the world's largest ice rink. 
That is absolutely insane. After moving to visit the magical mountains of the Zhangjiajie National Forest Park, located in the Hunan Province, this forest is home to some of the world's most incredible scenery. The park is full of these rock pillars that ascend from the forest floor. They are covered in lush vegetation and misty clouds, adding to their magic. These rock pillars are the inspiration behind the floating mountains in the movie Avatar. After I was wondering why that looked a little to visit okay. Hong Nao Bay. I mean, it's this mangrove area located between Krabi and Phuket, and it has this almost perfect winding river that cuts through the mangroves with jagged mountains on both sides. I mean, I'm just obsessed with the limestone mountains that just jet out of the water. It's such a baffling location. Also in the bay, there's this really interesting island village called Pani, and nearby is also the iconic James Bond Island. After, okay, we're going to head to cool. Indonesia to visit Mount Bromo. Located on the island of Java, I think Mount Bromo is one of the most impressive volcanoes in the world. Mount Bromo is very active. There are several lookout points that give you an incredible view of the crater with the other volcanoes in the background. This is unbelievable. While we're still on Beautiful. the island of Java, we're going to visit the waterfalls of Tumpak Siwu. It's definitely one of the most incredible waterfalls in Indonesia, as it has dozens of streams that cascade into the bowl below. Look at that. It's overshadowed by the Samuru volcano, which is the same volcano you can see in the distance from Mount Bromo. After, we're going to head over to Central America to visit Belize's Barrier Reef. Oh, Located off of Belize's coast, Belize's Barrier Reef is part of the Great Mayan Reef, which is the second largest coral reef system in the world. It's home to over 500 species of fish and also one of the biggest populations of manatees. <laughs> one of the most iconic I've places in Belize's Barrier Reef is the Great Blue Hole. When you think <clears throat> of Belize, this is what a lot of people imagine. It's over 1,000 feet wide and wow. 400 feet deep. Now, special thanks to my buddy, Will Mitchell, for helping with footage. He makes some great videos of Belize, and I'll link his channel in the description. Now, to get to the Blue Hole, you can I need to a get a drone. boat ride from the island <laughs> of San Pedro, where you can also take a quick flight to see it from the air. It's truly one of the most unique locations on Earth. After, we're going to head to South America to visit the Amazon Rainforest. Now, if you look at the Amazon Rainforest from space, you can see that it's just this massive green area in northern South America. The Amazon extends into countries such as Peru and Colombia, but 60% of the Amazon Rainforest is in Brazil. An interesting huh? fact about the Amazon is that I it's home it was to big. a Didn't large collection of animals and plants in the world. From pink river dolphins to scarlet macaws, the Amazon is home to so many creatures. It makes me wonder what other undiscovered animals remain hidden in the vast rainforest. Now, no. afterwards, we're going to visit Lençóis Mariensis. Located in the northeastern part of Brazil, Lençóis Mariensis is not only one of the most unique landscapes in Brazil, but all of South America. It's this almost endless array of sand dunes that fill up with these Caribbean blue lagoons during the rainy season. You may recognize this landscape from the planet Vormir in the Avengers movie. Now, the lagoons are a great place to go kite surfing or just Son go swim in. The best time of year to visit I the never... is from June to September. This is when the lagoons are full and the sun isn't as strong. You can That's explore good. the dunes by taking a tour on a 4x4 car, or you can also rent ATVs or go horseback riding to see the wonders of this otherworldly place. Wow. After, we're going to head to Venezuela to witness Angel Falls, known as the tallest waterfall in the world with a height of 979 meters. Special thanks again to Ellis for sharing his FPV footage. 3,300 feet. into the depths of the Venezuelan jungle for two Sing. weeks <laughs> to get some of the world's most incredible footage of this waterfall. I mean, it's seriously jaw-dropping. Now to reach Angel Falls, it's not an easy journey. You'll fly into this town of Canema, and from there, you'll take a day boat trip up the river to reach the falls. While it's not an easy journey to get there, the falls are more than worth it. After, we're going to venture down to Patagonia. Located in both bottom halves of Chile and Argentina, Patagonia is easily one of the most beautiful regions in the world. It has fjords like Norway, sounds like New Zealand, and the mountains are comparable to the Alps. Now, one of the most wow. famous places in Patagonia is Torres del Paine. It's located on the Chilean Just, side. Wow. Torres del Paine is a national park home to animals such as guanacos and pumas, and it's named after its iconic three granite towers. Another one of the most well-known places sense. in Patagonia is Fitzroy. It's this mountain range located on the Argentinian side. I think it's possibly one of the most beautiful mountains in the world. There's several glacial lakes and viewpoints to marvel this mountain range from. After, we're gonna head to New Zealand to visit the Milford Sound. Located on New Zealand's South Island, the Milford Sound is a fjord that was carved out by glaciers during the Ice Age. The Look best way that. to experience this sound is by taking a boat tour. You can go deep into the fjord and also get up close and personal to the many waterfalls. This part of New Zealand is also one of the wettest places in the world. I mean, the whole area is full of rainforests and magical waterfalls. 
After I'll never get tired Australia looking at New Zealand. The outback. Ever. When you look at Australia from space, you'll notice that basically all the cities are on the coast, but the interior of the country is this orange desolate landscape with hardly anyone living there, and that's the outback. The most iconic landmark of the outback is the Uluru, or Ayers Rock. Yep. It's this massive monolith made up of sandstone. It's a sacred site for the indigenous Australians, believed to be a resting site for ancient spirits. There's okay. definitely an energy That's there, different. which is bizarre how it sits alone in the desolate outback. Afterwards, we're going to head over to Switzerland to visit the Alps. I have to say, the Swiss Alps are one of my all-time favorite regions in the world. There's just something magical about the massive mountains, They're just incredible perfect. landscapes, and history that exists there. They're just the perfect. most iconic mountain in the Alps is the Matterhorn. It stands at a height of 4,478 meters. I will never ever complain if you have Italy. Swiss Alps now, in your videos. The town of is located at the base of the Matterhorn, <clears> and it's a great starting place to explore the area. You can take up the Gornograt Railway, get some incredible views of this real famous peak. Wow. Our next natural wonder is the Northern Lights. Also known as the Aurora Borealis, the Northern Lights is a natural phenomenon that is caused by solar wind interacting with magnetic particles in our atmosphere. The best place to see the Northern Lights is in the Arctic Circle, and I think one of the best and easily accessible places to see them is in Northern Norway. I was there a few years ago. Norway. I flew into the city of Tromso, and we're on this Norway. island You're so Sydney. beautiful as well. That night, I was lucky enough to see the Northern Lights dance across the night sky. The best time to see the roar is from the months of October to April. Another incredible place to see the roar is from Lapland, which is the northern parts of Finland and Sweden. I mean, the combination of snow-covered pines and the green aurora is a scene straight out of a dream. After it, we're going to head over to the island of Kauai to experience the Nepali coast. There are very few places in the world, if any, that can match the beauty of this coastline. The Nepali coast is filled with sea cliffs that rise over 1,000 meters from the ocean, contrasted with deep, narrow valleys that empty to the sea below. That's incredible. There are several that... ways to experience the Nepali coast. Whew, One of the best like, ways is by yeah, helicopter. Right it can be a little expensive, Just imagine getting that but you'll be able to get incredible views of the cliffs. Another great way is through a boat tour. You'll be able to experience the coast from a new perspective, and you can also jump off the boat and do some snorkeling in the ocean. It's truly phenomenal. If you're on a budget like me, there's plenty of hikes and lookout spots you can go to to have an amazing experience exploring the Nepali coast. After it, we're gonna head over to the island of Bora Bora. Located Bora Bora. in French Polynesia, Bora Bora is the definition of tropical paradise. I mean, the geography of the island is true perfection. There's the main island that's home to the massive <coughs> dormant volcano called Mont Otemanu. And then there's this barrier reef that surrounds the lagoon. This protects Bora Bora from the waves of the Pacific Ocean, so inside the lagoon, the water is calm and is truly some of the clearest water I've ever seen. I spent a few days sailing around Bora Bora's lagoon, and it was some of the most incredible- I'm not a massive- Oh, oh hold on. I'll wait 20 seconds. Wait, 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 wait. my life. If you get a chance, you gotta give Bora Bora a visit. Well, that is it for my Natural Wonders Top 25. Let me know where your favorite ones are in the comments below. You can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Shirley.Films. It's Ryan, and we will see you later. If you guys aren't subscribed to him, go subscribe to him. The man makes incredible videos. I hope one day I can make a video a fifth of what he does. Uh, but what I was getting ready to say is I'm not a massive ocean guy. I respect it. I think it's gorgeous, but I just... I don't like deep water it just it's always kind of freaked me out lakes and, and ponds and stuff are okay oceans got a lot of creatures in it that i don't know are there so it kind of freaks me out a little bit but that crystal clear blue water like that wow incredible uh you know my favorite was the swiss alps but it's always my favorite i'm not gonna lie that or milford sound in new zealand i mean they're just so majestic looking however and what i said earlier in the video i'm so thankful that i watched this because it gave me a whole new look on Africa. And that was my own ignorance. I, I should have looked it up. I should have seen that there's more to Africa than deserts and, and lions. You know what I mean? That's that's my ignorance. But that's why I'm doing this channel is to learn. And Africa was jaw-droppingly gorgeous. I had no idea how beautiful Africa could be. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I, I surely did. I thoroughly enjoyed this video. So thank you all so much for watching and for being here. Like the video if you haven't already. Consider subscribing to the channel. It's free for you. Helps me out tremendously. We're, we're right there. We're getting so close to making this my full-time job. And I'm so thankful for all of you for it. Um, comment, you know, what your favorite area was on here. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks, guys.